What is up all of my horror fanatics out there? Welcome back to Late Night Frights. I'm the Late Night Frights horror leader, the Jay Sloan or Jordan, back here to do another video for you. And as always, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. Last week we did horror battles, and if you haven't seen that yet, please go check them out. It was a great week overall. We did have a few missed videos, and for that I do apologize, but... We are going to start the week now, and hopefully everyone will make their videos. We're going to start off with another theme, obviously, and uh, we're going to do another top 10 theme, another top 10 list. Uh, a lot of people have been liking those, so we're going to keep going with those for a little bit. And uh, this top 10 list is our top 10 favorite vampire films. So vampires is one of my favorite subgenres in horror. I mean, I absolutely love them. Not the Twilight version of vampires, that little wacky mix-up imitation there. I mean, I, my vampires are ones that I loved as a kid. They're bloody, they're vicious, and they want human blood. That's the vampires that I love. So, uh, going to go through my top ten list here, guys. It might not be your top ten list, but this is mine. This is not the official list. This is just in my personal opinion. So, starting off with number ten, this is a comedy type, a, pretty much a vampire comedy. One that I've always loved. I believe it was made, I'm not exactly sure, uh, 1985. So, this one is starring a very famous comedian actor who I don't think gets enough recognition for this one. I think this is kind of swept to the side by all of his other comedy films that he's been in. And it is Once Bitten. Vampire's Kiss is another really good one, but it just couldn't make my top ten list. Once Bitten starring Jim, uh, Jim Carrey, Lauren Hutton, Karen Hopkins, and Cleveland Little. Great, great film about a 18-year-old virgin trying to lose his virginity and uh, running into the wrong person to lose it to. A vampire who thrives on virgin blood to keep her young. So she needs, uh, I'm not exactly sure if it's every 50 years, every, no, it's like every Halloween, I believe. Every Halloween she needs uh, of her, like three virgins blood to retain young, to keep her youth. And uh, she sees Jim Carrey, she's already had two of them, she needs one more. She sees Jim Carrey, tries to get his blood, bites him for the first time, and you know, throughout the rest of the film, it's a cat and mouse game of him changing into a vampire and her trying to finish her ritual to remain young. One that I've always liked, love the acting. Like I said, Jim Carrey is great in this one, but he doesn't get enough recognition for it, in my opinion. But uh, Once Bitten, great acting, great cast, great story, very, very funny. And I've uh, got some really cool-looking vampires within the film as well. Uh, so that's number 10. Number nine here uh, is one that not a lot of people like, and it's one that I enjoy. I don't love it. That's why it comes in at number nine. Uh, and it is I Am Legend starring Will Smith, which was made in 2007. This one is kind of like a last man on earth type deal where the entire earth has been taken over by vampires and the population is down to very few. And to Will Smith's character, he is the only one left, and he is trying to fight and find out the cure uh, and help these vampires and bring humanity back and also... That way he can get back to his wife and kid and find them, which he has hope that they are still alive. I like the lonesome feeling that this one has and the apocalyptic feeling that it has as well. Uh, Will Smith did a great job in this one, uh, really showing how crazy that you would be if you were alone. The only thing that he has, the only company, is his dog. And it's so sad when he has to put his dog down. His acting is great. and We all know that Will Smith can act. He's shown that prior in tons of other films. And he does a great job in this one. My only complaint is the CG vampires, guys. What are you going to do? It's done. It's over with. I believe Practical would have been a lot better. But maybe not for what they were going for with the creepy, creature-like running vampires. Uh, vampires who hide. They still keep a lot of... They still stay true to a lot of old vampire elements like they hide in the day. Come out at night and they're very vicious, very fast, and very deadly. Uh, but I've always enjoyed I Am Legend. It's not great, but it is a fun apocalyptic vampire top tale coming in at number eight uh, so that's ten nine coming in at number eight is a gothic top vampire film starring kate beckinsale and scott speedman and it is underworld i love the gothic feeling to it it is truly a underworld top film uh the battle between the vampires and the werewolves is really awesome and you've got kate beckinsale's character who is really caught in the middle uh between a van between vampires and werewolves as the person that she has loved is bitten by a vampire uh I believe it's actually bitten by her. If I, I mean, yeah, I think it's her that he's bitten by. Uh, and then also bitten by a werewolf, so that creates a hybrid type deal, and she really falls in love with this uh, character. So it's really a battle of love and a battle of vampires and werewolves. And one of the only top films like this, I mean, it kind of mirrors Twilight in a different way. I mean, it's got a different story altogether, but 
it's a love story type vampire film, but it's got a lot of blood. It's got a lot of gore in it, and it's uh, one of the only ones out of the franchise that I like. Part two's okay. Three and four were just not good at all to me, but the first Underworld I've always enjoyed. So coming in at number seven, we have a classic here from 1979 starring David Soule, uh, an adaptation from a Stephen King novel, a great Stephen King novel, and it is Salem's Lot. Everyone knows this one. I love the paranoia and the confined town slowly turning into vampires, and the head vampire in this one, which everyone has seen. Regardless if you have seen the film or not, you have seen this vampire somewhere at some point in your life. It's so creepy, and this just has a bone-tingling feeling to it. The vibe is so chilling, and David So does a great job as the lead trying to find out what's going on, and he does, and he doesn't really like the results, so always love this one. Classic. I love the scene with the uh, child going to his friend's window and knocking on the window, you know, sliding, you know, gliding, pretty much flying through the window. Creepy scene. I've actually met a grown man who's like 35 years old tell me that he cannot watch this film because it scares him to death. So that really shows you how tingling it really is. It's a long adaptation, as most Stephen King films are, but uh, it's great. All it's uh, If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out, and that is Salem's Lot Classic. Coming in here at number six, I believe it's ten nine eight seven six. Uh, is a uh, what year was this made? Let's see, guys, two thousand seven film, and it is Thirty Days of Night, starring Josh Hartnett and Melissa George. Always like this one. It's really dark. It's not gothic. It is very very gory, and it shows how brutal vampires can be once again. But I like the whole story where they're in Alaska. It's Thirty Days of Night, which is scary anyway. If you had to go through 30 days of complete darkness, you would be terrified. Um, but having 30 days of complete darkness and vampires plotting to attack your town, that is even scarier. That takes it to a whole other level. And I love Josh Hartnett's acting. I've always loved his acting since uh, since Halloween uh, H2O, since H7, and then The Faculty and many other films he's been in. Really, really good. Really like this one. And, uh, yeah, so that is 30 Days of Night. Very brutal, guys. Love the way the vampires look in that one and their communication, how they talk, and the overall film just from start to finish is I've always enjoyed it since it came out. Really dark, really bloody, really scary, and really brutal. So coming in here at number five is a, I'm not exactly sure when the film was made. Let's see, 1994, this one's starring Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and Kirsten Dunst. Uh, Antonio Banderas is in this one as well, and it is Interview with the Vampire. Now, this is one of the only elegant, fancy top vampire films that I really enjoy. Twilight and things like that, that's just not my cup of tea. This one also, it has its, uh, it's, it's very fancy and elegant and all that, and you know, I... It's, that's not a huge. I'm not a huge fan of that type of vampire film, but this one is very bloody, very gory, and it has a great story to it, um, based off of a novel, of course, and it is what it says it is. The title pretty much explains it all. Interview with the vampire. Interview with Louis, telling about his maker Lestat, and how they, you know, how he was turned to darkness. Uh, you know, telling this interviewer all about his vampire adventures from good to bad and everything that happened with him. So that's why I've always liked this one. Guy's great acting. It's got Christian Slater in it as well. Really, really good. Always loved it. Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt's, you know, how they play off of each other. Just really great. You can say what you want about those two actors, but they are really, really great actors. So Interview with the Vampire comes in at number four. <clears throat> Coming in at number um, number five, I'm sorry. Coming in at number five is a Robert Rodri Robert Rodriguez directed film starring George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Harvey Keitel, Juliette Lewis. Everyone in this is just an all star cast. Absolutely love it, and it is from dusk till dawn. This is one of the dirtiest and most gritty uh, vampire films that I've ever seen, and it really doesn't even feel like a vampire film for half of the film. It feels like a kind of a criminal getaway type film with you have the uh, you have the gecko brothers who have escaped prison and they take a family hostage trying to get them over the border and to some money uh, and they go to this bar to wait for the drop they go to a bar called the titty twister which they are unknowingly walking into a slaughterhouse when it turns out to be ran by vampires and I love that it flips just like that everything that you thought was going on in the film completely proves you wrong Always love the acting. I'm not a huge fan of George Clooney because, let's face it, he's not made that many great films. He's made a few here and there. This is one of his best roles. He really plays it well. 
Seth Gecko is a badass, and you have his crazy brother, Richie. Absolutely love it. Everyone in this, uh, Harvey Cattell, who's been in a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies, he's a fantastic actor. Juliette Lewis, uh, just a great cast and a great story. Very dirty and gritty, and I love the way the vampires look. Once again, they didn't go with your classic, average, tradi traditional look. They went with a very new and unique look for that time period, and I believe it was made in, like, 98, possibly. I could be wrong. Uh, it's 97, 98. So, yeah, From Dusk Till Dawn, absolute classic.